In this quick lesson, we'll learn how to draw and name peptides. The first question reads, draw the structure and give the name for the tripeptide glycine serine methionine. Before we begin, a while back we had a video on amidation. Amidation is when an amine-containing molecule forms a bond with a carboxylic acid. And because amino acids have a carboxyl and an amine group, it's a perfect example of amidation. If that's confusing to you, I'll discuss it further as we do this question. So here's a glycine amino acid. Take a good look at it. Here's the R group. That's the carboxyl, and that's the amino group. From this sequence, we know that it's bonded to serine. Serine looks like this. That's the R group once again. And what happens is a bond forms between this part of glycine and this part of serine, the left side. In an amidation reaction, it actually produces a water molecule. And here's how. The OH detaches from the carboxyl part of glycine. So this part detaches, and a bond forms between this carbon and this nitrogen. Of course, for that bond to form, a hydrogen needs to be removed from the serine. The OH and the extra hydrogen from the serine forms a water molecule. So it's a condensation reaction. Let's go ahead and draw that out. We have NH2, that part, bonded to the carbon of glycine. That's the R group of glycine. And this is the carboxyl part that has been transformed. So we have the carbon double bonded to oxygen. That's single bonded to the nitrogen of serine that has its own hydrogen. And then the rest of the serine. In the process here, a water molecule is released. The same thing happens with serine and methionine. This carbon will form a bond with this nitrogen and a water molecule is released. Before I show you that, the bond that is formed here is called a peptide bond, or more specifically, an amide bond. Let's continue drawing this. So our nitrogen is bonded to, I'm looking here for reference, the carbon of methionine, the hydrogen, its R group, which is a lot longer than the other two. That's what attributes to the shape of the peptide. And finally, the carboxyl part. The abbreviated name for glycine is G. For serine, it's S. And for methionine, it's M. So here's how you name this. You can name it in its short form as GSM. But this tripeptide is named from the N terminus to the C terminus where instead of glycine, we write down glycyl. So it's G-L-Y-C-Y-L. -Y Serine becomes suryl. Notice that we drop the I-N-E. And the methionine, given that it's the C-terminus of this tripeptide, keeps its name. And this is what accounts for the fact that peptides are the longest words in the English dictionary. They're all one word. They're not split. So technically, if you have a long polypeptide, you're going to have a word with sometimes over a thousand letters. And this is why proteins are considered the longest words in the dictionary, interestingly. One more thing before we conclude. At physiological pH, the C terminus would lose its hydrogen, becoming negative, and that hydrogen would attach to the N terminus. That's the answer to question number one. Let's move on to question number two. Draw the structure and give the name of phenylalanine and thionine, a section in glucagon, that's a peptide hormone released by the pancreas to convert glycogen in the liver into glucose. We're going to be doing the same thing again. We have phenylalanine and thionine. I have them shown right here. Beginning with phenylalanine, I'll write down N H two, just like that. And this part remains the way it is. All aromatic amino acids tend to be hydrophilic, just to let you know. So we have our benzene ring, and the carboxyl part forms the bond with the nitrogen. And now we have its, our group. And the carboxyl, at physiological pH, just as before, this loses its hydrogen, and this gains a hydrogen, making it positive on one end and negative on the other end. And let's see, we had to give the name of it. So we would write down 
phenol alanol alanol thionine and there you have it a quick example on how to draw and name peptides